because yeah, because then, then I've got a question yeah, for you. Yeah, because I think really, I think what Kate has missed the point there that unborn children who are born prematurely will be given pain relief immediately. And if a child is born at 21 weeks and the youngest child in the world who has survived at 21 weeks will be given pain relief throughout, the pre er, throughout that child's life. Um, so I think she's lost the point there, that missed the point that uh, uh, if she was in a neonatal unit, children will be given pain relief, yeah, even as early why? as 21 you know weeks. Why? But that How doesn't finished? lessen their humanity. The reason they're given pain relief is because they're no longer in the womb. And as I've said, the amniotic yeah, and what, fluid and what within changes? the womb What changes from the womb? What changes? what changes? What changes from that life? The amniotic fluid, which is... And what changes that human life from the womb to being born? What well, but changes? I've said, I've, no, but I've said that it's a continuum. I've said this over and over again. It was yeah. the first thing I said, and you obviously either weren't paying attention or you're just not very bright, Bernadette. I don't know which, but the reality the, ultimately, is your arguments are so ridiculous. No. My the, arguments the reality are what 80% of people in Britain it's agree proven. over. Science all no, over the world. Not. Scientists all over the world agree life begins at conception. No, and life don't. is a continuum. That's, that's, it continues that's, that's, right that's, through. That's not. And the, the only difference in a child conceived in the womb and a child, a toddler born, a teenager, a geriatric, is size, level of development, degree of dependency, and environment. Um, the reality is you yourself were once an embryo, you were once yourself a fetus, which is a Latin word for little one, you became a toddler. What's the difference in sustaining that life, protecting that life? A born child can't protect themselves. Obviously, as a parent, as a mother, we have to protect, we have to feed a born child, we have to clothe it, we have to change a child's nappy. If we left a child uh, without feeding that child, that child wouldn't survive. But the we as human beings, we that. care for the most vulnerable. The most vulnerable in our society is an unborn child. I'm defending your position on this, really? this point about I, I, statesmen I, 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 of truth. With friends like you, Tim, I wouldn't yeah, be enemies. I, I can defend well, my position. Neither foes nor loving friends can hurt nicely. you. And all men count with you, but none too much. Um, if on the, this point about if, if you're trying to defend the truth, um, uh, are there you know, areas where you, know, you are selective? Let's say, for instance, um, Kate said that her straw poll is saying that people that have had abortions It's not a are, straw poll, it's scientific research. Yeah, but also your experience. But my let me finish my question. Course, yeah. 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 Um, uh, your experience is, is the opposite. Is, is it possible, just looking at it in a fair-minded way, that you, you're not choosing to see those who basically have a different, a different view after their abortion? Well, I think we have all the evidence that shows that the unborn child is a human being. We have all the evidence to show abortion hurts women. In fact, the, uh, the Royal College of, um, of Psychiatrists um, ha had stated a number of years ago that women who um, are considering abortion should be fully informed of the consequences of the abortion because uh, abortion hurts women. Uh, recently, Pro Professor Casey, a um, psychiatrist, a leading psychiatrist in Dublin, um, carried out a study over 60 years on women who may have suicidal tendencies in pregnancy. And um, none of those women committed suicide. They were given the treatment um, to help them through that very difficult uh, time. None of them died as a result of committing suicide. So I think really Kate is willing to disregard studies that show that abortion does hurt women, that women are safer uh, when they're given the care and support and medical um, help through pregnancy and I obviously the essential point is which which sort of slightly weakens your your armor is, is that because you believe so fervently in your position I are, are you just not able to in the same in the same way as you believe fervently in your position but are, are you not able to you know present all of the facts and just say well you know that the statistics are mixed or you know or, well, or, or are, are you taking a position, you know, that the life of the unborn is so important, you, you, you're a campaigner, you're an activist, you, you're not so interested in all of the arguments? Well, I don't think any of Kate's arguments have any stability. They could never win the day. The reality is, Kate, you are in favour of the destruction of another human being. And Thank I'm obviously in, I'm in favour of protecting life from the moment of conception. I'm in favour of equal rights for all people born and unborn. I am not willing in 
to kill another human being or stand by and allow that to happen. And I think, I think Kate, where you come from, you come from a country where abortion is legal on demand, where we are now seeing the, the effects of abortion on demand. We're seeing many women coming forward now who've regretted their abortion, who are coming That's out and telling yeah, their but stories. It's not true. I, but, but what you know, we're saying is that on that how argument, could we there ever agree? Sides, how yeah. could we ever agree? Yeah. There, there can't be two sides because life begins at conception. No, I mean, uh, in individual terms of some human who have a being. position, you know, on the other side where they believe in pro-choice, they, they won't regret their abortion. That's the point I'm making. Well, many women who have abortions may feel that they made an informed choice by calling themselves pro-choice. But the unborn child has no choice in this argument or in this debate. Okay, so sorry, people like no, myself who are involved as a voice for the unborn child who want actually. to speak for the mother and the child. So the reality of this is um, there's no such thing as pro-choice. I'm pro-choice for a number of reasons. I choose to wear this yellow jacket. I choose to um, wear makeup. I choose to do a number of things. I've, cho I've chosen to come here. But when it comes to inflicting that choice on another human being, a unique, in, unique individual human being who began their life at conception, I don't have that choice or that right. And why, why, why would women regret their abortion? They wouldn't regret their abortion if it was a blob of cells. They regret the fact that they lost their baby. Can I ask a question, um, uh, Kate, uh, on sex selection? Because it's now come out from a study of the census in 2011, I think the independent. It's not. This is a bunch of lies, again, built okay. up by a bunch of propagandists. But, but, I mean, it was an I mean, it's the independent newspaper. I yes. don't, well, and, and everyone's you, a propagandist. If you, even, if you even read the bottom paragraph of that, it says there is another explanation for these statistics. There is no evidence but to suggest... In the wider world, I, hundreds of millions. Yes, well, if I could finish, I'll say. Yeah. There is no evidence to suggest that gender-selective abortion has ever taken place in the UK. Ever? Um, ever. Absolutely none. But I absolutely accept that it does happen in other parts of the world. It's definitely a huge issue in places like China and India. And, you know, why are women making that choice? And the answer, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly obvious it's because they live in this culture uh, where there is an enormous amount of sexism in the culture that they live in. And I think that a lot of these women are making a choice that isn't really a very real choice for them. And what we need to do, obviously, is to solve the problems that are out there. We need to tackle the sexism. We need to improve their lives. We need to make it, a lot of them feel that they can only have one child because of resources and because of tax and because of the circumstances in which they live. We need to say to women, no, it's okay, you can have as many children as you want. We need to say to women um, that girls are not less valuable than boys, because you have to believe that girls are quite a lot less valuable than boys in order to want to have an abortion purely on those grounds. We need to tell them all of those things. What we don't need to do is to turn to women who live in a culture which is incredibly misogynistic and say, you know that one right you've got left? Not anymore. Yeah, you know how you live in this culture that devalues women and ignores women's needs and does all of these things? Well, on top of that, now your right to control your own body, we're taking that away as well. You're not even a woman, you're an incubator now. Okay. Of Could course, that's not, that's not the solution to these okay. problems. Well, yeah. anyway, I, I helped you by talking about the wider world. But if you go back to the UK, yes. you said there's no evidence of any no, um, sex-selective abortion. There so isn't. what's your comment on that, the, the independent newspaper study, well, which said between 1,500 and 4,700 are missing, uh, yes. or girls yeah, are yeah. missing, well, you have to look on at the, the way 2011 census? I have a degree census. in statistics, Tim, don't mind. Yeah, no, I, I know, I'm out of my league. Statistics I'm not, yeah. to you. What they're doing, what they're doing is they're looking at people from certain communities, and they're looking at people who have two children, and the first one is a girl. And they're finding that disproportionately the second one is a boy. So you've got, say, 100 women who've got two children, and half of them, the first one is a girl, obviously half of them, the first one is a boy, they've stopped looking at them. The other half, the first one is a girl. They've then looked at them and gone, oh, a lot, the second one is a boy. And they've interpreted that to imply that women are getting pregnant with a girl for the second pregnancy and having an abortion. There is another, but they're only looking at women who have exactly two children. There's another explanation, which is that women who have a second child and it's another girl, some of them go, oh, but we really wanted a boy. And they get pregnant very quickly and they quickly remove themselves from the pool of people um, who have two children. And actually, I think even if we look outside of these minority communities they were looking at, I think we recognise that. I know a lot of people who have a boy and a girl, and they go, oh, that's perfect, that's our lovely family, that's what we wanted. People who have two children of the same gender are more likely to go, oh, let's try for one more and see if we can get the other thing. So that is a perfectly sensible, logical, st statistical explanation okay. for the numbers that have been observed. And it, in actual fact, in the bottom of the Independent article, it actually said, or also, this could be the case. Okay, so what I'm trying to explore is what, what uh, the question mm -hmm. I was putting to Bernadette. 
are you so determined in your position that you'll come out with a statement that there's no evidence whatsoever for any well, sex no, selective abortions? Not at all, Tim. Not at all, Tim. Okay. There is no evidence in the UK for such a thing. But as I've said, I'm absolutely 100% of the opinion that it happens in China, that it happens in India. And in actual fact, I wouldn't be all that surprised to discover that there are people from those countries and from those communities, if they've moved to the UK and that perhaps they've only just arrived and haven't really started to pick up British culture and to realise that we live in a culture where women are much more valued perhaps it's still not perfect but much more valued um, I can absolutely understand how we could end up with a you know in the same way that if you get you know a, a racism problem in one place and then people move they yeah. can bring their values with them yeah. so it's absolutely no I, I'm not at all of the opinion that it will never happen although I will say for the record that to date there is no evidence that suggests it has okay. but it absolutely does happen because I can China imagine in, in the independent article there was a caveat in terms of 1500 to 4700 but I was just interested you said well, there was yeah, no evidence of any and well, that yeah, seemed a bit of a at, strong statement but that's they're talking about that, that that's still looking at these only counting people who've had two children um, and saying more of them have got one of each than have got two the same and I, I personally, just from even just from my personal experience, I can see an alternative explanation for that. And until they do the research that says, let's look at the wider community, do people do that? Let's look at people who've got two or more children, then the research will be valid if they looked at everyone with two and up children. That would make complete sense. But they haven't done that research. I look forward to seeing it. Okay. And it may well show a tiny, tiny amount of, okay. of those things taking can place. Can I just ask one more question yes. to, to Kate? And um, if you were to rewrite the, the 67 Abortion Act and the follow-on, um, how, would, how would you? I, I, would, I, would, I would go tripping over to Canada and uh, I would copy their legislation on it. I think they have a fantastic model over there, which is essentially rather than building a huge framework of legislation around it, they've essentially just decriminalised it and essentially said women, and this may seem radical, uh, but it shouldn't be in the 21st century. Women are smart, intelligent individuals. They can do the research. They can dig out you know, the facts. They can look at the risks. They can look at the balance of expectations. And uh, you know, obviously Bernadette has talked a lot about uh, you know, negative outcomes from abortion. But we shouldn't forget, of course, that there are also some very negative outcomes from Pregnancy, um, you know, p uh, postnatal depression affects about 10% of women. It can be very serious. Um, it, c it can lead to suicide attempts. It can lead to a lot of serious things. I think that women are smart enough to look at the different options, to look at the different things, and make that decision for themselves. And I think it rather infantilizes women to have the state making any rules. To be honest, I think the state should just step away. I think if men were the ones that got pregnant, you'd be able to get drive-through abortions. Um, the, po the point, just in the last couple of sentences, that um, you know, the postnatal depression could be equated to people who have had an abortion. So, having, they, you know, in other words, the, the studies on the sort, of, the sort of mental results of you know having an abortion. Uh, I think um, Kate is unwilling to face the reality of how abortion affects women. Um, women well, now one, throughout so the world experience um, how abortion the majority of women because I've been through it myself the majority personally, of and I women can tell you throughout it was the an world. enormous relief and yeah. I felt just relieved and I was very stressed beforehand and I was like I'm not ready for this and I knew exactly what I wanted and I was sure. delighted to discover well, that I was in a country at the time where abortion was available where I could access it I could afford the treatment that I wanted I could get it done uh, on the time scale that I wanted and at the time that I wanted an appropriate aftercare that's, and that there were people around me so that's okay. that is, speaking about women you know, that I meet who are suicidal. Right, but okay, so let her answer from they're, her They're position, suicidal yeah. um, because they um, had lost their, their unborn child because they aborted their baby. I think Kate undermines the fact that women should be informed. Many women have abortions and they're not aware of the, the consequences of the aftermath of abortion. I've met those women, those women who have been suicidal, who, who are trying to replace that child that they lost. And the reality is abortion um, is not good for women. Women deserve better than abortion. And I want to ensure that women in Ireland are given all the help and care and support that they need. We can see women coming forward from throughout the UK who are, who are um, given their testimony um, on the streets, who are uh, um, appearing on TVs, they're doing interviews about the effects of abortion. Kate can tell her story, but I would say nine out of 10 women and evidence has shown that that have some adverse effect from abortion, whether that be psychological or whether that be physical. And I think that evidence is very clear when you take Ireland into the equation here and you look at the results of a country that doesn't have legalized abortion, um, we can see how abortion is destroying the world, it's destroying women, and obviously she doesn't care about those women. Sex selection, let's look at that, because the reality is it was an undercover operation, exposed. 
And the reality is it's been debated in Westminster. And if we really genuinely care about women, as she says she does, a 